All right, so right here I have a solid return electrode and I have a split pad electrode. And of course I showed you earlier the plate electrode. You usually don't see these too often except in vet clinics. You can tell something about what your hospital cares about by seeing what type of electrodes they use. The split pad electrodes that look like this are always gonna be safer. And I'll show you why that is in a second. The single solid electrodes look like this. They're not that much more expensive to get the split pad and you get a little extra safety factor. So I always recommend that hospitals or whoever I'm dealing with works with split pad electrodes. All right, so to attach one of these electrodes to the lead here, you actually have to make sure you open this up and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide that in the electrode right there. Make sure that's nice and just nice and snug. At that point, you can pull it off place it on the patient, which I suppose I'm gonna have to be since I don't have any other patients around. All right, so you can see that's on my arm. Depending on where the surgery is being done, you may have to put it in different places. That's really more of a clinical issue. But I wanna show the safety feature that comes with the split pad electrode. So you notice my ESU generator over here, everything's happy, green lights, no alarms, no nothing. What I'm gonna start to do is peel this back. And what happens when you start peeling back the return electrode is all that right, metallic region right there, that's all conductive. The less contact you have with the skin, with this metal region, this conductive region, then you're gonna have a increase in the current density, which can lead to burns and issues at the return electrode, which you absolutely don't want. That's always a liability and there's always someone at fault if a patient gets burns from a return electrode. Now what I wanna do is start removing it to simulate what happens if the the electrode starts coming off the patient. Well, this is what happens with the split pad electrode. As it starts to come off, as that conductive part starts rolling back, you can see that at some point, an alarm gets thrown, All right? So right now, if I wanted to, this pencil will not work, okay? It's not gonna work because that alarm is thrown. And until I fix that, it's not gonna do anything. Well, the reason that happened is because there's a circuit that will measure the resistance between these two electrodes. And if that resistance gets too high, and there's a certain percentage that they base that off of, they go, wait a minute, something's happened to the return electrode, stop the ESU, we're not gonna cut right now until someone fixes that return electrode. Okay, real quick, let's take a look at the circuit for the return electrode monitoring, or also known as the REM circuit. Okay, so over here, you can see we have the ESU, we have the return, plugged in, and then we have the split pad electrode, right? So what's happening is basically it's acting as a multimeter would. Those two pads are acting as the probes on a multimeter would measuring the resistance between the two pads. Now common resistance measurements are gonna be five to 135 ohms. That's a common range that the ESU is gonna actually measure. So what's gonna happen is there's gonna be some baseline resistance based off the person's body that falls usually within that common range. And if that resistance increases by 35% from the baseline, I did notice a slight discrepancy as I was working through this. And I did find another part of the service manual that talks about the return electrode and an increase in resistance of 40%, the REM circuit is gonna alarm. So just a couple examples. If we had 100 ohms as our baseline, and it increased to 135, the alarm would go off. Another example, if we had a 60 ohm baseline resistance and it increased to 81 ohms, the alarm would go off. Mm -hmm. So there's some baseline, and if the circuit senses that it's increasing, increasing at that 35%, once it's increased 35%, the alarm is gonna go off. So the split pad is always safer because you have that extra monitoring going on. That monitoring does not exist with the solid electrode. Now it'll throw an alarm if the solid electrode just completely comes off. So I'll show you that. You can see no alarm right now, everything looks good. But if this were to come loose, this cable were to come loose, there's an alarm that gets thrown. Or if this were to come become disconnected, there's an alarm gets, that gets thrown. So not nearly as much safety, but obviously, you know, this, this solid electrode isn't able to monitor the resistance or anything of the electrode itself because there's no way to do that with just a single 
solid electrode. So if I were to put this on myself, and then I could peel it off. Oh, the... And there's no alarm, right? So this thing could you, could, you could imagine just getting like a really small amount of surface area there, which is gonna create high current densities along the skin. And that's how you get real issues when doing electrical surgery. So let's take a look at how you can use your analyzer to check the return electrode monitoring circuit to make sure everything's functioning properly. So for this, you need to know the values for your specific generator. But what we've basically done is we've connected the return right here to the CQM port and the variable load jack on our Fluke tester. Now CQM refers to contact quality monitor. So that's basically Fluke version of REM or return electro monitoring. So when you're first starting out, right, you're gonna have to plug this in to your return electrode. Make sure you plug in this to the area below, this to the CQM port, and then you're gonna go over here to CQM. Pretty simple, really. Um, as you increase this knob, you're changing the resistance between these two ports. So one of the first things we're gonna do is we are gonna, so every time you increase this thing, you know, you're gonna throw out the circuit. So one way you reset the circuit is you unplug it like that. So first we're gonna check the low limit. So we're gonna keep going, oh, be careful not to go too fast like that. And basically all this is, is a really fancy decade box that I'm using right now. You could use a decade box, in fact. So you don't have to buy this fancy tester to do this test. Okay, so I'm gonna do this a little slower. And I'm gonna keep scrolling down until the alarm goes off. Okay, at around one ohm. Okay, so that is the low limit. Uh, ideally, the low limit would be for this particular generator between five and nine ohms. So it's a little off. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the high limit. So I'm gonna get this higher, unplug this, reset the alarm. And I'm gonna to increase the resistance slowly until I get an alarm. All right, at 143. Ideally, that would be between 145 and 155. Pretty close in, in this case. Okay, so for the next test, you need to make sure that you scroll down to around 60 ohms. And I'm just picking 60 ohms because it's worked well for me, but you can pick any number that falls within the range where you can increase that value by 35%. Make sure you unplug this and replug it in. So you reset the baseline. And then we're gonna increase this slowly until the alarm goes off due to the 35% increase in resistance, or what we hope to be 35% increase in resistance. Okay, so we're at 77, and that's a little lower. So that was actually maybe closer to 30% off the top of my head. So, you know, it's not exactly tuned in to exactly what it should be. So, but those are the three things you're gonna look at. You're gonna look at the split pad low limit, the split pad high limit or hard limit on the high end, and you're gonna look at the percent increase in the split pad that causes an alarm. So those are the three tests you got to run for the split pad. Another test associated with return electrodes is this one's actually testing the circuit for the solid pad. And for this one, you're supposed to start at zero, make sure the electrode's green, you've reset it, make sure it fixes in the baseline to simulate that uh, zero resistance because it's just a single pad, right? So basically both of these wires would go into a single pad and there'd be no resistance between that or negligible resistance, I should say. If there was resistance for some reason, it does go off at around 20 ohms. So what you're supposed to do is slowly bring this up to 20, 25 ohms. And it should alarm around 21, 20 ohms. So those are two test parameters that you're supposed to run for the single pad return electrode test. I hope you enjoyed this video on return electrodes and I hope you return for some other videos. So check some of them out.